Hello everybody, this is Francesca from Fattoria di Montemaggio and welcome back on our YouTube channel. Today we are going to speak about a very, very interesting topic. We are going to speak about rosé. Of course, uh, I know we tasted many times the rosé wine, we spoke about our rosé uh, di Montemaggio many times, but we never actually explain um, fully um, about all the different techniques that you can find when it comes about rosé production. So in this video we are going to cover this argument uh, and I hope of course you will learn uh, very interesting uh, details about the different methods to produce rosé wine. So before we start to dive into this argument we need to clarify one very important aspect. We do not produce rosé wine we don't produce rosé wine blending white wine and red wine. It's not possible, it's illegal. The first method that we are going to talk about is the direct pressing. And this is probably the most common uh, method in Provence uh, to produce rosé. Do you know why? Because they adore super light and pale rosé. Actually, when we think about pale rosé, we think immediately about uh, to Provence. And this is actually the perfect method if you want to achieve that kind of result. How does this method work? It's very simple. You go and press very uh, gently and uh, uh, you need also to, to do this in a very slow way. Uh, you go and you press the grapes very gently and then you will collect the juice, separating the skins from the juice. So there will be a very short, short contact, a very short contact between skin and juice, so little passage of anthocyanins, uh, which are the uh, substances that are uh, going to give the color to um, the um, actual uh, juice. The shorter is the contact between skin and juice, of course, uh, uh, the uh, lighter is the, the rosé. And in this case, the, the contact is super, super, super short. I mean, it's uh, just, you know, uh, during the moment of uh, pressing that you have this kind of like contact and then of course you collect the juice and you let it ferment. Uh, Fermentation will take place in 10 days, 2 weeks like normally happen and then of course you will have this beautiful pale rosé. The second method that we are going to talk about is the short maceration which is the method that we really like to use in Fattoria di Montemaggio. It's a very simple uh, but effective uh, solution. Basically what you need to do, when you crush the grapes of course uh, you will obtain the liquid uh, part of the most and the solid part of the most. Then of course you pump the liquid and the solid uh, mass uh, together in uh, of course a tank and then of course you will leave it there uh, in contact, uh, the skin and the juice, the solid part with the liquid, liquid part, for a few hours, just a few hours. And uh, of course, uh, in, depending on the timing, that of course uh, you will um, leave in contact with the skin and the juice, of course you will have a, a different result. Um, if you keep in contact skin and the juice, uh, let's say from anywhere from 8 up to 12 hours, you're going to have a very dark, 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 um, rosé wine, if you keep in contact the skin and the juice for two, three hours, four hours, you're going to have again a pale uh, light rosé. That's the idea. There are also some regions of the world where you can find this technique, uh, of course, uh, done in a diff slightly different way, let's say. Uh, and for example, uh, there are some cases where they keep in contact the skin and the juice up to 24 hours, producing a wine that it's named uh, Chiaretto uh, or Claret. Uh, and um, uh, of course you have this wine which is literally in between a dark rosé and a red wine, a light red wine. So. And this is a very interesting kind of method. You can, of course, uh, see uh, production uh, like this in uh, some part of Piedmont, some part of uh, Liguria, uh, some part of, uh, uh, you know, France, and also uh, at Lake Garda. So now we arrive at the third method, which is the sangue or salasso in Italian. In English, we can translate this name with the, the term bleeding. Basically, you go to create a leftover from the red wine production, and then from that, you obtain your rosé wine. 
But let me explain something more Basically, about it. Basically, at certain point, when you are proceeding with the vinification process for a red wine, and you have the skin and the juice in contact in a tank, you're, you're going to remove a portion, a percentage of the juice, and that will be your rosé. That will be, uh, of course, a, a wine that has a very deep, intense, dark rosé color uh, with a lot of aromas. But then what's the difference between this Sangier process, process and the short maceration process? Well, it's very simple. When you do Sangier, you're creating a leftover from the red wine uh, production and you're doing that mainly because you want to concentrate your red wine. So you're just separating a lighter part from the much more uh, concentrated part, you know, to get that very concentrated red wine. And of course, the rosé you're, you're uh, producing, it's a leftover from uh, that vinification process of the red wine. The short maceration, it's not a leftover. You are going to proceed in that with that specific method only because you want to produce a uh, dark uh, and deep and powerful uh, rosé with, of course, a beautiful, beautiful bouquet with a beautiful complexity. And of course, probably you're also to um, go to start um, the harvest moment a little bit in advance uh, and uh, you are not obliged to respect uh, the final maturation moment uh, that usually you respect to produce uh, a red wine. Uh, you can go a little bit in advance when the acidity uh, in your grapes is a little bit higher and the sugar level are a little bit lower. So you're going to have a, a rosé with a better acidity and a lower alcohol uh, content. We're going to let ferment the skin and the juice of a white grape with the skin and the juice of a red grape. Of course, the more skin and juice of a red grape variety you will have in this uh, uh, mixture, in this most, of course, the darker will be your rosé. So uh, if you want to have, um, if you want to obtain a very light and pale rosé, it should be a very small, tiny percentage of this skin and juice from a red grape variety. If you want to have a very dark and muscular rosé, it should be a little bit more, but don't, do not exaggerate. What about blending? As we said earlier in this video, of course, it's not possible to blend the white wine and the red wine to create a rosé. Uh, it's possible anyway to blend white uh, and uh, red wine uh, together uh, when it comes about champagne or franciacorta. So when it comes about sparkling wine to give the touch of rosé. To the wine but of course this is needs to be done with the base wine so the wine that will be eventually transformed uh, into the sparkling wine so you need to do this process literally right before the um, uh, you know uh, second fermentation that will occur in the bottle with this kind of methods uh, which uh, of course is the uh, classical method or the champagne method basically you have uh, yeast and sugar to make it simple in a bottle and those kind of yeasts are going to create second natural fermentation in your bottle of wine that of course will eventually give you the sparkling wine. Well, so with this blending thing, when it comes about uh, champagne or franciacorta, you are going to have, of course, in the um, of course early stage, the blending of a, a little bit of red wine, very tiny little bit, with the um, white wine. So the two bays are uh, blend together, and then you will have a second natural fermentation inside the bottle to create this kind of like little rosé, um, little uh, champagne rosé. There's also one last method that we need to talk about, which is the use of pink grapes. Can you believe it? <laughs> of course, uh, it's super rare to find uh, those kind of uh, wines, uh, wines that are produced from pink grapes. But uh, yeah, it's also possible. Uh, you need to know that it's uh, a rarity. Uh, in Italy, we have uh, only 10 uh, grapes uh, variety uh, that are pink or at least considered pink uh, and uh, of course uh, it's super super rare there's the uh, Prie uh, Rouge which is a, a pink variety and the Moscato Rosa which are the two most famous uh, and uh, of course uh, um, you know Again, it's something that it's super, super uh, rare to, to find. Um, how does it work for those kind of grapes? Uh, well, those kind of grapes has a very uh, low percentage of anthocyanins, so they uh, look uh, like pink grapes. 
and and of course uh, it's uh, it's super uh, difficult uh, even if you keep in contact skin and juice for uh, you know the entire fermentation process to have a very dark uh, and deep color that will remind you to a red wine and then of course you will develop this kind of uh, rosé uh, kind of wine so I hope, of course, you learn a lot and also uh, that you will have a lot of fun discovering uh, all those different type of wine. Of course, you can uh, make a research and uh, taste them together, also blind. I suggest you also to test them blind to try to understand the differences, especially when it comes about pale rosé versus uh, much more structured and dark and important rosé. But also, if you want, the rosé produced from pink grapes. So uh, again, uh, I hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That would mean a lot.